in this fourth video of the memory topic, we are going to be looking at the multi-store memory model. So your learning objectives are to be able to describe the structure and the process of the multi-store model of memory, to define the key terminology, and also to apply the knowledge of it. Now, there are lots of key terms. We've got sensory store, attention, decay, short-term memory, capacity, maintenance rehearsal, long-term memory, auditory, duration, and visual. Let's get started. What actually is the multi-store model of memory? So this is a theory that was proposed by Richard Atkinson and Richard Schriffen in 1972. They stated that human memory or the human memory system is made up of three separate stores. So this is what the model looks like. We've got the sensory memory store, short-term memory store, and a long-term memory store. Now, information has to be able to pass into and out of each store. So let's have a look at how that happens. So firstly, we get input from the environment. So a sight, a sound, a taste, etc. This goes into your sensory store. And that is called encoding. If we do not pay attention to it, that memory will decay. But if we do pay attention to it, that information will be committed into the short-term memory. To remain in short-term memory, uh, it has to be rehearsed. This is called maintenance rehearsal. If we do not rehearse it, it can be displaced by other information or it can just decay. Now, information can be transferred into long-term memory through elaborative rehearsal. And also information can decay or we can fail to retrieve it uh, and thus forget it. So let's break down each of the stages. So sensory store. So stimuli from the environment enters the sensory store whether or not you are paying attention to it. If you do not pay attention to it, it will decay. But the sensory store can only hold information for approximately two seconds. It can hold a lot of information, but not for a very long time at all. The information is encoded by the separate sensors. In short-term memory, this is when information has been paid attention to. As we discussed before, it has a capacity of seven plus or minus two. This is called Miller's magic number seven, as it was first proposed by a psychologist called Miller. If short-term memory um, reaches its capacity, so above the seven plus or minus two range, and more information enters, the information that's in that short-term memory store could be displaced. The duration of short-term memory is approximately 30 seconds, so after which, if it has not been transferred by elaborative rehearsal into the long-term memory, it will decay. So rehearsal in short-term memory, there's maintenance rehearsal and elaborative rehearsal. So we must repeat, or in uh, psychology terms, rehearse the information that is in your short-term memory. That uh, immediate rehearsal is maintenance rehearsal. And over time, that allows the information to be transferred into your long-term memory. The encoding in short-term memory is mostly auditory. So hearing words, uh, repeating them, that is how it's going to be committed to your, uh, into your short-term memory. Elaborative rehearsal is also necessary for information to pass from your short-term memory into the long-term memory. Elaborative rehearsal involves thinking about the meaning or semantics of what is being memorized rather than just repeating it over and over again. So um, thinking about that meaning will get it into long-term memory. Research does suggest that we can increase the capacity of short-term memory by chunking information. So for example, when you read out your phone number, it's likely that you give it in groups of threes. For example, 256, 781, 923. That's three chunks, so we could remember seven plus or two, um, plus or minus two uh, of those chunks, which is a lot more than if you could just remember the digits on their own. Moving on to long-term memory then. So long-term memory has both an unlimited capacity and duration. So in theory, we could have unlimited amounts of information in your brain for as long as you live. The encoding in long-term memory is mostly semantic. So that is thinking about the meaning. That comes from the elaborative rehearsal. Encoding can be visual and auditory Oops. for long-term memory. So here you have a little task then. Check your knowledge. Can you recall the duration of each store, the capacity of each store, and how the information is encoded? Pause the video and have a go now. Okay, let's start with the sensory store. If you remember, the duration of the sensory store was approximately two seconds. Its capacity was quite a lot not a very specific number there, and it is encoded via the sensors. Short-term memory has a duration of 30 seconds, a capacity of seven plus or minus two, and it is mostly encoded 
um, auditory or acoustically, it's the same thing. Long-term memory then, the duration is unlimited. The capacity is unlimited, but it's encoded semantically, so by the meaning of the word. You also have to know how to evaluate the multi-store memory of models, so let's have a look at some points. So psychology suggests that the representation of short-term memory is too simple in the multi-store memory model. This is because it suggests that short-term memory is only one store, but other research disagrees. For example, we can um, commit information that we hear, that we see, that we taste, that we touch. So these all involve different sensory stores. And some research suggests that those sensory stores, the, the different um, groups, persist in short-term memory. Evidence from neuropsychology also suggests that the long-term memory is made up of multiple stores. So we've looked at the different types of uh, memory already and the brain parts associated with them, but the hippocampus was associated with autobiographical memory, whereas the cerebellum was associated with procedural memory. That is not represented in the model. The third point is the role of rehearsal versus meaning. So if we consider the meaning of the information, which is semantic processing, then we process it much more deeply, which allows it to be committed to long-term memory much easier. Now that is kind of accounted for in the model by elaborative rehearsal, um, but the multi-store memory model really does emphasize rehearsal, repeating information, rather than looking at the meaning of the information. Additionally, um, if you've ever kind of witnessed some sort of sh shocking information, um, it's likely that's quickly committed to your long-term memory um, without any rehearsal at all. So this model does not account for that. That's everything you need to know about the Montessor model of memory.